Alright guys, I'll be firing this flintlock musket here. Now, have you guys been to Jamestown yet by chance? Yes. yes. Yep, so you may have already saw the matchlock musket. So instead of the uh, burning piece of rope uh, with the matchlock musket, instead we'll be using this flint and steel. Now how this is going to work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab out a paper tube. I'm going to open this up, pour a bit of my powder into the pan here. I'm going to shut the pan. Uh, in windy climate like this, uh, what do you think I'm shutting the pan? I don't want it to blow out exactly. I'm also shutting the pan because my next step, I'm bringing the weapon to my side here. Now, if I don't shut that pan, all my powder is going to go away. It's not a very good use of powder. From here, I'm going to send this rammer down the barrel after I've charged the rest of the cartridge. I'm going to pack some pressure at the bottom there. And then when I go to fire this weapon, I'm going to pull the trigger here and watch what happens. See those sparks? Now those sparks are going to ignite the powder in my pan. That's going to uh, go through a small little vent hole about right here. And that leads to where the rest of my charge is. Now uh, here I'm only going to be firing blanks and no actual musket balls. We uh, usually point in the uh, direction of the National Park. I can't exactly use windshields as target practice. Exactly. So instead, I'll be firing blanks as I mentioned. And I'll make sure to warn you guys ahead of time because it is still going to be fairly loud. Now this weapon that I have right here is going to be a smooth bore weapon. Now uh, modern shotguns are also going to be smooth bore. Uh, are they notorious for uh, very good long range or relatively poor long range? Poor long range. Yeah, usually poor. So this thing, same exact concept. Uh, its effective range will be 85 to 100 yards. Now nowadays, uh, can you think of something that's about 100 yards? Football field, exactly. So imagine to kind of you know get an image in your head. I'm at one end zone. And there's a singular person at the other end. Do you think we're ever going to hit each other? Probably, Probably not. Now, I uh, definitely would not go to Vegas with those odds. So that's why you see these guys kind of firing in large section, sections of soldiers. I'm not going to hit the person I'm aiming at, but who am I going to hit? Somebody down that field. As long as I hit somebody, I'm perfectly fine with that. Now, uh, there is a reason as to why we have it a smooth form. Uh, not just to uh, hinder ourselves. I mentioned this rammer before. Now because the weapon's a smooth board, notice I sent my rammer down, I didn't add any force or pressure to that. So reloading one of these weapons will take me about 15 to 20 seconds. I get about three to four shots off in a minute. If I had a rifle, the barrel's gonna be a lot more tight and compact. So when I send down that scouring stick, that's what they call their rammer, I'm gonna have to really force that stuff in there. Reloading a rifle will take a minute, minute and a half. So this is gonna be the clear victor here. And on the battlefield, it's going to be very similar to what you see in the movie. You're going to have ranks of soldiers, so you're going to have a few lines, um, and they could either fire in those ranks or they could fire in sections. So maybe about 10, 15 men down, they fire, they start reloading. What's the next uh, 10, 15 men down going to do? They're going to fire. They're going to fire, and they start reloading. Next section, fires, starts reloading. By the time your final section is fired or your final rank is fired, who's about to fire? First section. So we're making up with that reload time by constantly firing at the enemy. Now folks, if you're on the battlefield and you get about 100 musket balls flying past your head as you're trying to load one of these weapons, are you going to be scared? I'm definitely going to be scared if I saw that. Um, so my movements might be a bit shaky. So keep in mind, as I'm loading this weapon, it usually takes me about 15, 20 seconds, right? Because musket balls are flying past my head and i got to deal with that pressure, that could uh, boost my, uh, my speed up to maybe about 20 seconds at, or 25 seconds out of game. So intimidation plays a very big part in this. Now if we're constantly firing these weapons, they could start to get through. And if that's the case, I could have a few misfires. Knock on wood. Um, in the case where we have a few misfires and the enemy is still standing, what could we use? Bayonet. Bayonet, exactly. And this piece is attached and effectively turns the weapon into a spear or stab. And we go to charge with this bayonet. We're going to move at a very, uh, very even pace. We're not going to run all willy-nilly down that field. Go to charge, we have it in the shoulder fire lock position. So march, 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 and just move twice as fast. And that final command, charge, we we'll drop the weapon into our hands, and that's where we kind of break out of that sprinter or run basically. Now again, I'm gonna put you guys in the shoes of the soldiers. Your men have been going down all next to you. You got about three to four dead bodies right next to you. You got two people that are injured, and you have maybe about one or two people who are perfectly fine. Are you scared at that point? Mm -hmm. Now the enemy. They fixate their bayonets, and they're charging at you. And it's basically creating a spear wall. Are you scared of that point? 
Now to further scare you, these guys are not going to be silent as they uh, run forward. They're going to be screaming as loud as they can. I want you guys to try that right now. So I'll count to three, and when I get done with three, I want you guys to shout out as loud as you can. One, two, three. Yeah! All right. If I heard that, I'm staying on the battlefield, and I'm going to continue to fight. That was good. These guys will be shouting a lot louder than that, a lot more ferocious. Now with those factors all together, what are you going to do on the battlefield? I'll give you a hint. Run that one. If you don't want to deal with that, you're going to get pushed off the field. And that's how a lot of these battles are going to end. One side gets pushed off the field. Um, really, folks, this is in the Empire we're fighting against. This is how we're going to be able to fight. We push them off the field, we prolong the war long enough to the point where public support back at home, little to none, basically. And the surrender of General Cornwallis here at your town is going to be the final nail in the point. Now, any questions before I go to fire this thing? All right, well, I'm going to step back. I'll be doing two firing, hopefully. First one will be a manual exercise. So I'll go step by step and explain what I'm doing as I do it. Next one will be a, uh, a combat load. So on the battlefield, you already be in this position, and you hear prime and low. And you go through the motions, however fast you can, and then once everyone in your section is in this position, also know it's going to give the final three. It's going to use as many visual cues as you can, and the battlefield gets a bit loud. So, I'm in the prime and low position here. My first command will be half cock fire lock. I bring this back one tick, and notice I'm trying to pull my trigger, but nothing's happening. This is the safety of the weapon, it won't go off in this state. Next will be handle cartridge. I slap open my box here, grab out a paper tube. Now how am I going to open this? T. Exactly. So right now, throw that out. Next will be prime. Pour a bit of my powder into the pan, not all of it though. Next will be shot pan. Here I cast the weapon about, charge the cartridge, let my powder fall first, then the paper. Draw rammer. Two swift motions, ram down cartridge, and again, I don't really have to force it in there. Two motions to retrieve the rammer as well. And then to return it, it's simply return rammer. And then finally, you have shoulder fire lock. Now, did you guys bring hearing protection today? Yeah. No. You have your hands. Oh, simply yeah, use the palm, cover up your ears. Me, however, my hands will be a bit preoccupied. So I'm going to do something that uh, they probably wouldn't do back then. So imagine the guys on the cannon crews, they're just, uh, they simply have their hands. They got paid two extra dollars though, so I'd say it's worth it. I'm going to be using hearing protection, because I rather like to hear. I'm going to turn around again if you want to cover up. Okay, ready? Take aim! Fire! Prime and low. That's awesome. So again, this is where I'm aiming for that uh, 15, 20 second mark. Now as I'm doing this, what's the enemy going to be doing? Merging at you. Yeah, as we mentioned before, the enemy's going to be firing. So I'm going to have to deal with that kind of pressure. Not to mention, that amount of smoke I just produced, it didn't seem like much. Yeah. But imagine about, a, about that kind of pressure. So now in the first place where I was shooting at the enemy, now I'm shooting at the smoke where the enemy is probably. Get ready! Take aim! I was not expecting that to go off without an inch, so that was very good. <laughs> <laughs>